those of you who got an invite, welcome to Nerd Prime. <laughs> no matter where in the world you are, we're all Nerds International. With the hyphen. Alright, you tubes, it's Mr. Mean coming at you on this dreary, ugly day in Beaumont. Uh, it is raining, it's been kind of gnarly, um, but it's, uh, it's a good day to do a review. So I had promised a young man who had reached out to me on, U on YouTube if I would do a review of his game that he's getting ready to publish. And uh, he sent me the quick start rules, and I gotta say, I'm gonna start it off by saying um, I'm impressed. Um, I like what he's done here, um, so we're gonna we're gonna jump right into this. So this is Mr. Mean bringing you the first review of Ambrosia Quick Start Play. So hopefully you can see that there. I don't have a physical copy, so this is on my new Amazon Kindle. Um, and I gotta say, let's 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 start out with it uh, here. So the author is uh, Erlen Vanderhagen. Um, this will be published in 2017, according to. Uh, what I know, um, and Erland, if you're if you're watching this or you you watch it, please comment in the notes below. He didn't give me a link or anything to download. He just sent sent me a private link, so I don't want to post that. Um, I'm I'm assuming it might be okay, but I don't know yet, um, so I don't want to do that. Um, but Erland, uh, feel free to post a note in the uh, show notes there and uh, put a link to the download where people can get the quick start. Um, he did not specify if he, if he was going to Kickstarter or not with it, so I don't know. So um, your guess is as good as mine. Again, hopefully Erland will uh, will get back to me on that and uh, hopefully post a link to the uh, Kickstarter. So um, this is a cool game. It's a it's a medieval fantasy game. Um, he's created his own world. Um, before I jump into the actual hard review of mechanics and setting, I, I want to go with the physicality. Again, I just have a, a PDF. Um, it's, uh, how many pages is it? This is new here, so I don't even know. It doesn't tell me. Uh, 34 pages. So 34 pages. Um, the art is um, quite nice. Um, as you guys well know, one of my huge pet peeves is non-consistent art. And Erland here is a beast because he did the layout. He did the photo manipulation. He basically made this on his own. He does give credit to a, a group of uh, playtesters that helped him. Um, but... Uh, all the art looks like it's mostly real world pictures that he has, you know, photoshopped or gimped to to manipulate. I'm sorry for the glare. There's not a whole lot I can do about that. Um, but I like it. It's very consistent throughout the book uh, or throughout the quick start. Um, there's another little piece of art right there. Um, obviously, that's either one of his friends or a piece of stock art stock art that he found and he just manipulated it. Um, and he did a great job. The page layout is, is clear and concise. You can read it. It's uh, functional. Um, actually, even on a, on a tablet, it's, it's working great. Um, he, his constant use of themes for his tables is very clear and concise. Um, I, 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 I like it. I like it. I like it a lot. Um, we'll get into the mechanics. I mean, some of the art, I don't know you know, like that one. It kind of looks like it might be CGI, but it kind of looks like it might actually be a person. It's kind of hard to tell, which is kind of cool because in a fantasy game, you want kind of that mystery. Um, and then there's there is a character sheet, um, which he provides. I don't know if that's washing out. There you go. Hopefully you can see that. So very cool there. Um, and this, like I said, I, I'm not sure if he's going to make it a, uh, a PDF uh, and sell it on drive through RPG or if it's going to be a Kickstarter. He's got his uh, world map. I'll give that a second to focus, which I like, and some of the uh, heraldry from the different lands. So very well thought out. Um, uh, I, I really like it. Um, I like the layout. Hopefully the whole book follows this theme. Um, I don't know if it's going to be a hardback, or I'd imagine it'll be a softback or a print-on-demand. I thought this was a very cool picture. I'm assuming that's an elf or some fey person, um, but I liked it a lot. It, it kind of grabbed my, my attention. Um, he uh, he has some quotes in here that are very timely and well done, um, and it, it, the PDF just flows. I mean, I, I was really I was really impressed with the layout and how it looks. I think it says volumes. 
for somebody to throw out something that they've created and throw it out in the wild and let it be critiqued. Um, those of you that have watched my channel know that I follow Ash Baker on Gorilla Miniature Gaming because I do miniature games as well. And um, he does Widgets and Wonders, which is a phenomenal little episode about, you know, small companies that put stuff out. Um, and a lot of them are like single guys working out of the garage. And I kind of get the feeling that the Erland is in that same category. So much kudos to you, sir. I think it took a lot of effort and a lot of uh, gumption to put out your own game. And um, I wish it all the success. But let's get into it, guys. Let's let's see what makes this tick. So um, the game calendar, uh, he goes in and gives you a, a brief history of the world. Um, again, this is, I think, 32 or 34 pages. So he packs a lot of information in here. Um, the game calendar starts in the 14th century by the Carthay Cartharian calendar. Um, and the player characters start in the Everlands, which is like, it, this is its own world. So this is not based on, on real world uh, geography or, or history. Um, it's a medieval world with fantasy. The average age is about 40, um, you know, because it's not a nice place. Um, it's not as dark as, say, uh, Shadow of the Demon Lord or Warhammer Fantasy, but it is... A medieval surf slavery uh, the strong take from the weak that kind of thing with the fantasy you know thrown in there and there's goblins and monsters um, in there um, you have basically as you create a character your stats are kind of predetermined you have some general stock of humans and you can choose those by region so they give you a little bit different flavor uh, and you have dwarves and you have elves or all player characters and and you have three primary attributes or stats. You have your physical, your mental, and your social. You don't roll those though. Those further break down into your attributes and there's two for each. So for physical you've got strength and dex. For uh, mental you've got knowledge and intuition. And then for social you have charisma and appearance. Um, and then your skills are based off of those. So when you want to do something in the game, the game is based off of D10s which you got me right there because I'm a huge D10. I don't know what it is about D10s. I love D10 systems. Um, the nice part is, so you would roll, you would chuck it a single D10. A one is always a failure, no matter how you how you slice it. And a 10 explodes. So if you roll a 10, you can keep re-rolling. Um, but you'll take that that you'll take your skill, you'll add that to whatever bonuses and modifiers and negative negatives you might have flaws or, or anything like that and that d10 and you're trying to get a, a success number of and it starts at seven goes up eight nine ten eleven and so on and so on the higher the number excuse me the tougher it is so it's a very smooth system um it, the character sheet is laid out well so you're going to easily see those numbers um you're going to get certain skills um, and then you're gonna you're gonna expound upon those, um, and it's pretty it's pretty simple. It's not a huge giant you know ginormous list of skills. I'm sure when he does the physical book, he'll he'll have a little bit more in there. Um, but it was very elegant. I thought it, was, it reminded me. It was very reminiscent of uh, Cyberpunk, a stat, a skill, and a D10. Um, it's very similar to that. Um, so it's a very easy, quick. You, I don't think players will have a hard time going, oh, what do I, you know, I want to I want to read this scroll. What do I do? Well, that's mental, so it's going to go off of knowledge. Boom, add your knowledge, roll a d10, good to go. Um, so I think it uh, it breaks down very well. It makes it very simple. Uh, this, from what I've read, it seems to be very streamlined. He wants, he wants combat. He wants task resolution to flow uh, very fast. And I like that. I like games that are simple and you don't need a, a, an abacus to figure out what you're doing. Um, so he's definitely hit the mark there. Um, your initiative, I like this. Initiative is set for the round. You don't keep re-rolling initiative. You roll initiative once. Uh, he recommends that you put the players, you seat the players in order of initiative, either clockwise or counterclockwise. I don't know if I want my players getting up and down, you know, through the whole game, and maybe I misinterpret that, but that's the way I read it. Um, but you, you roll initiative and you're done for the combat. And the way I read it, it kind of sounds like if you had another combat further down the road, you would re-roll initiative. But maybe it's it's static for the whole night. Uh, your initiative is figured out by your attributes, your your flaws and your advantages and things like that. So it's it's pretty, pretty streamlined. I like it. Um, there's three kinds of damage. There's physical, mental, and social. So it obviously makes sense, you know, if you, and then of course there's three different damage tracks that go off of that as well. If you're in a, in a courtly intrigue and, you know, and, and the bishop makes fun of you, 
that might be some social trauma, you know, and so on and so forth. And of course, physical combat is, you know, is going to create, you know, physical damage. And uh, mental trauma is uh, mostly the purview of magic. Um, and they, he goes into how to do magic in the game, and it's, it's very similar. So, and again, I don't think this is a very difficult game system. I, I don't think anybody will have a hard time picking it up. Um, com and then the, here's the part where the game kind of sets itself apart that I really like. You have action points. Your action points, everybody has 10. Um, I didn't see any advantages or anything because he didn't go real deep into his advantages and flaws. But it looks like everybody gets 10. That's what you start with. And then you want to use a two-handed battle axe. Well, that has an encumbrance, and that value will subtract from your action points. So you want to attack someone, it may be four action points to attack them. But because you're using this super heavy weapon, it might impose a penalty of three action points. And I'm not, I'm not saying verbatim here. It's, I, I just I read. I didn't memorize it. Obviously, I'm not playing the game. I would like to, though. But... Um, you get a penalty basically on your bigger weapons and smaller weapons make you a little faster. Um, and then depending on the action you're taking, it has an, an action point cost. You have 10 points, use them wisely. Um, you can always act in your turn in your, in your round, which is nice. So if three guys are attacking you, you can split up those action points and you can defend against all three. One of them's probably going to get through because again, you only have, 10 action points and I think the base block was like four points and then it's modified by your weapon and stuff so um I think that's really cool um it could get a little crunchy in the aspect of keeping track but I think once you get your maneuvers down and you know okay it's a social situation or it's a combat situation you you're, you're gonna you're gonna know those and and he's got a little page you could just print that page out uh for the action point cost and put it in front of everybody or it, there's even a spot on the character sheet to write it down so you're gonna know it so i think that part it, it probably would flow pretty fast the way i read it it seems like it would um so that was a cool part about combat and conflict and i really like that he goes into damage and you know damage takes time to heal um it's a, it's a violent game um it is very similar to warhammer fantasy in that aspect that you take a solid hit it may take you months to recover um now of course there is magic in the game so there you go but it's better to start a fight and finish it than to, you know, be in the middle of a fight and not finish it. So pick your battles wisely um, is basically what it boils down to. It's a very it's a very pretty dark world, and combat can be ugly, and as well it should be in any game, I think. Um, you have your standard races, like I said, the humans, and there's, about, I think, three or four different flavors of humans. And then you have dwarves and you have elves. And your stats are predetermined. Your, your primary um, abilities are predetermined. And then... It breaks off from there, um, and then as you get new skills and stuff, it increases. So that's how you can increase your your attributes, your your core, your primary attributes. Um, I also really dig how he does experience points. Um, basically, you get one point for every three to four hour session. Now, if your group plays a little less time or a little more time, I don't really think you need to you need to adjust it. What's cool is I they don't do levels in per se. At level two you get this, and at level three you get this. Um, what happens here is one XP um, per session, and then it's based on role playing. It's not based on killing monsters. It's not based on you know kicking the dungeon door in, killing all the kobolds, and taking their treasure and coming back and oh you leveled up no. It's on role playing. It's whatever the GM. Now, if you're a GM that runs heavy combat like I do, you could very well base it off of that. But if you like courtly intrigue or you like, you know, the magic, you know, duels and everything like that, um, or researching and finding more information, you get experience for that as well. So um, if you've got the murder hobo in your group, but you've also got like the scholarly sage that wants to learn and learn and learn. They both can gain experience from doing what they like to do. And as we all know, there's all kinds of players that enjoy everything. So I really like that aspect. And then what happens is when you amass 21 experience points, you go up to level 2. Um, and what happens there is for every, every point of XP you get, you get karma. Now your karma you can use for a, as a wild card for extra effort for doing things that you normally couldn't do so you know the 
the fighter has to lift the, the heavy cage door to get the princess out. He can spend a point of karma for extra effort to try and do that. And I really like that. Now the downside is once you spend that point of karma, it's gone. So use them wisely. Um, I like that. You don't have to keep track of fate chips or bennies or anything. It's, it's, it's on your character sheet. You just mark it off. You're done. I like that. So um, that's the base mechanics of the game. Very simple, very elegant. I think it will flow very fast. Um, I'm definitely looking to give this a try um, with one of my gaming, my Saturday gaming group, because we try to play something different every every couple of weeks. So um, I've got a Shadowrun game coming up on tap here pretty soon. And I think after that, I would like to give this a run. Uh, it, that'll give me a chance to uh, print out the PDF and uh, make copies of the character sheet and uh, and go from there. I, what I would have liked to have seen is I would like to have seen some pre-generated characters. I don't believe there were any in here attached. Um, I could be wrong, but I don't, I don't think there were. Let me, uh, let me just double check. I don't believe there were. I see monsters. Monsters are at the end of his uh, PDF. Yeah, there's no pre-generated characters. Um, but I will say I love the names he's given things. Um, the undead are called Jonfer. Um, and it's when a witch dies, she, in, in rare cases, he is banished to the netherworld. The remnants of her soul won't aren't admitted there, doomed to roam the world as a living forever in extreme cases like after a violent death or a heated conflict, the manifestation of said soul called a jomfer will haunt the area where she lived and died, lived or died. So very cool. I don't know what mythology these are based off or if this is just stuff he made up. Um, he goes into really good depth on the church. Um, and they have bishops and everything. And it kind of reminds me, when I was reading it, it reminded me of Lady Hawk. Um, just this oppressive church that, you know, just because this one guy is ruling it, it's made everything evil. And maybe not necessarily evil, but it's uh, it's it's not good. Um, now, it could just be me reading it into it, and I'm really tired right now. Um, but I really liked it. I like the flavor and the tone of the Averlands sets you got lots of adventure there's a forest there's where the wicked things are i mean it, he does a great job of explaining it in these 30 i think 32 or 34 pages he's packed a wealth of information in here i can't wait to see what the actual full game looks like and hopefully uh he keeps that stellar art in there or keeps the same style um and keeps the same color outline and flow. Um, the magic section had its own color for its tables. The combat section had its own color. So it was nice. You knew you were reading combat. And you knew you were reading magic. Um, so again, I can't say enough kudos about how he laid the, the PDF out. Um, and like I said, he's a one-man show. Um, he did give credit to his playtesters, which I thought was cool. Um, and uh, yeah, he laid everything out. He did all the work himself. I, and I, Again, if you're going to take the time and the effort to put something out there and make it good, I, I think it's awesome. I, I think he de deserves much kudos. I hope he goes to Kickstarter, and uh, I, I hope he gets a lot of support. I know I will definitely uh, support him. Uh, Erlen, you can consider one of those copies sold. Um, it, I'll, uh, I'll buy it, and if, if I get a, a developer copy or if I get a review copy for free, that's fine. I'll, I'll buy a copy and give it to one of my friends. Um, cause I think the game's worth it. So that's, uh, that's my review of Ambrosia written and designed and conceptualized by Erland van der Hagen. Um, I don't know where Mr. Van der Hagen is from, but he did email me, uh, through YouTube. And so I'm going to process this video and put it all up. Um, if you guys have any questions or concerns or comments, obviously email me at jpolak at gmail.com or you can leave a note here on YouTube. I'm going to post this later on tonight after it renders. Um, it's only going on about 20 minutes. So, uh, Erlen, thank you so much for putting out a very cool piece of work and a little piece of yourself out there for everybody to criticize and critique. I think you did an excellent job and I wish you uh, nothing but the best. I think you got a cool little concept here and I, I hope it goes far. I hope, uh, people see it for what it is, that it's something truly different and unique and, uh, it's enjoyable. And I look forward to, uh, 
your success and uh, more books because we need to buy some. So anyway, as always, everybody, it's Mr. Mean signing off from very gloomy Beaumont. Peace, love, and hair grease. And remember, be nice.